At the end of last chapter, we calculated the pH of a strong acid and the pH of a strong base. Those are the easiest calculations that we have on calculating the pH of a solution. What we're going to do now is move into the next step where we're calculating the pH of a weak acid or a weak base. Okay, From there, we'll move on to even more difficult calculations. The simplest acid-base equilibrium are those in which a single acid or base solute reacts with water. We'll first look at solutions of pure acids and bases. Just like we did with the pure acids and bases of the strong acids, we're going to do that of the pure uh, weak acids and bases. These calculations are a little bit more entailed than they are for the strong one. Strong one was just straight 100%, so you knew the concentration of the acid was the concentration of hydronium. For the weak ones, it's not the same way. There's an ionization going on, and we're going to have to calculate that concentration of hydronium. After we um, handle the pure weak acids and bases, next we'll handle salts. Salts can have acidic, basic, or neutral properties, okay? And then the anions and cations of those salts can react with water to do hydrolysis as well. So salts can actually be neutral, acidic, or basic. A misconception that we're going to try to clear up in this chapter is a case where you have an acid and a base react and form a neutralization reaction, and we say, oh, it's neutralized. Well, you got to realize, yes, the reactants have been neutralized, but what about the product? You're going to form a salt and water. That salt could be acidic, basic, or neutral. So you, when you take an acid and a base and you do a neutralization, yes, it neutralizes the reactants, but you have to look at the products to decide if the overall solution will end up being acidic, basic, or neutral. Depends on the properties of that salt formed. The reactants are neutralized, but not necessarily the products. Acid ionization, or acid dissociation, is a reaction of an acid with water to produce hydronium ions, or hydrogen ions in the conjugate base anion. This whole process of an acid plus water okay, is a case of talking about hydrolysis. And acid plus water is a reaction, a reaction is called hydrolysis. We write the reaction the same way we did with the strong acid. You take your weak acid, and in this case water is going to be the base, and you take your proton from the acid will donate to the, the base, which is water, which then will form hydronium ions and acetate ions. It's exactly the same as your strong acid, except instead of having a single arrow, we have a double arrow. And that double arrow is representing to us that there's some ionization going on, and there's some equilibrium associated with it. Now, for the strong acid, we say that it breaks up 100%. A weak one is way less than 100%. Most of the time, we're talking even less than 5% ionization. Okay, less than 5% ionization. The K associated with this equilibrium is typically less than 1. Now, this is different than when we did the KC and KP reactions because those Ks were greater than 1 which meant that we had a large amount of products being formed. Since K is less than 1 in this case, the majority of the species is going to stay as the reactants, and we're going to have a very small concentration of hydronium and acetate. That's important to us because when we do our calculations, we're going to take advantage of that small K and simplify the math, and we'll talk more about that as we go. Because acetic acid is a weak electrolyte, it ionizes to a small extent in water, hence the double arrow. It's not 100% like a strong acid, which we wrote to single arrow. It's way less than that, something on the order of less than 5% ionization. So we're going to have to calculate how much hydronium is formed. When we have a strong acid, it was directly concentration of the acid gave me the concentration of hydronium. Weak one, concentration of the acid does not directly give me concentration of hydronium. We have to do a calculation to figure it out. There will be some equilibrium that we're going to do through K, and that relationship will allow us to calculate the equilibrium concentrations. For weak acid, the equilibrium concentration of ions in solution are determined by something called the acid dissociation constant. Okay, 
acid deals this the acid ionization constant. It's also referred to as the acid dissociation constant and is given a symbol of Ka. When we see Ka, what we're talking about is some acid plus water. In other words, hydrolysis of an acid. Let's consider this generic monoprotic acid, monoprotic meaning one acidic proton. We have a reaction. We can write an equilibrium for this expression, just like we did in the past with the Kc and Kp. It would be your products over reactants. Realizing that your liquids have an activity of one and not part of the expression. So this would be the concentration of hydronium times the concentration of A minus divided by the concentration of your weak acid, HA. So we have our expression. Realizing that our liquids and solids are not part of the expression. One, we can write the K for this reaction like we typically would do. Which would be your products of reactants, which would be a concentration of hydronium times the concentration of A minus divided by the concentration of HA. However, since we're referring to um, acid hydrolysis, basically an acid plus water, the constant is not known as K, we call it Ka which is the acid ionization constant. So we set it up exactly the same as we did with the Kc and Kp, except instead of calling it K, we're going to call it Ka. Same setup. Water still one, products over reactants. Let's look at an example here. What I want to do here is calculate the Ka of a weak monoprotic acid. We have nicotinic acid, which is a weak monoprotic acid, has the formula HC6H4NO2. Now what does a weak monoprotic acid? Mono means one, so what we're saying is we have one acidic proton that can come off the, the acid. Notice this acid has five protons. Okay, we have a hydrogen in the front and we have a four hydrogens in the middle there. Okay, so since this is a monoprotic acid, we only have one acidic proton. That's why we have one hydrogen in the front of the formula. Okay. I have 0 0.012 molarity of solution of the acid, and it has a pH of 3.39 at 25 degrees C. What I want to do is calculate the acid ionization constant for this acid at 25 degrees C. In other words, I'm looking for my Ka. Now, when we measure the Kc and Kp of our species, in the other previous chapter, we had to have the equilibrium concentration of every species. Okay, When I'm talking about the Ka of an acid, it's a lot easier because we ionizing and that hydronium ion concentration is related to the pH of the solution. So I can easily calculate the Ka of a solution by measuring the pH of it. pH will give me indirectly the concentration of hydronium, which then allows me to do my calculation. So measuring the Ka of an acid is a lot easier than measuring the K of a reaction of some sort. One thing I want you to realize as we work this problem is the math behind it, because we're going to simplify the math when we actually go solving for x. When I'm giving Ka and I want to solve for the x value, uh, I can simplify the math Okay, it's important to realize that the solution was made with 0 0.012 molarity in acid. However, some molecules ionize, making the equilibrium concentration of the acid less than 0 0.012, but just a small amount less, which is going to allow me to simplify the math layer. Instead of calling it 0 0.012 minus x, I'm going to call it just 0 0.012, and I'll be able to show you that, why I can do that in this problem, and why it's going to work later on when we do our calculations. So keep this in mind when we talk about this again at the end of this problem. So if we're going to calculate the Ka, first thing we do is write the equation. So you have your acid plus your water. The acid will donate the proton. So your products will be hydronium ion in the conjugate base. We set up our ice table. We have our initial 0.012. We have zero for hydronium and zero for the conjugate base. 
I need to figure out which way this is going to shift. Okay, since I have zero on the product side, it has to shift to the right, which means I got to consume my reactants and produce my products, which means that I have uh, minuses on my change for my acid and pluses on my change for my uh, hydronium and conjugate base. At equilibrium, I'll add the initial and change to figure out what I have at equilibrium, which in this case would be, oops, skip one step. I need to talk about my change, okay? How much change, I don't know how much change it is, so I'm going to have to do a relationship, okay, which we're going to say, let's um, call it X amount of it ionizes. So I have X amount of ionizers on my reactant side, which means I have X amount going to form on my product side for hydronium and X amount for my conjugate base. The nice thing about acid-base calculations is everything's done one proton at a time, which means that all your reactions are all going to be one-to-one, -one, so your change is all going to be X. So same thing we did before, but we're not going to really have coefficients to deal with. All of it's going to be X. So X change for my acid, X change for my hydronium and X change for my conjugate base. Now, to get my equilibrium concentrations, I will just add the two values up, which gets me 0.012 minus X, 0 plus X, which is X, and 0 plus X, which is X. The next important question I gotta ask myself is how are these three components related? Okay, what relationship do I have between the three? And that's gonna be Ka. It's important to ask this question because eventually it may be KB, maybe KA1, KA2. So you need to ask yourself, what's K? How are these species related at equilibrium? In this case, through KA, I'll set up my expression, which would be my products over reactants. So the concentration of my hydronium times my concentration of my conjugate base divided by my concentration of my acid. Realizing that these are my equilibrium concentrations. Okay, these are my equilibrium concentrations. So I'm trying to find Ka in this case, which means I need to know those three concentrations to solve for Ka. I know the relationship between these three species at equilibrium. So to be able to solve for Ka, I got to know what X is. Okay, so I need to know what X is. So was there any information other information given to me that allow me to figure out what X is. Well, the only other information they gave me was the pH of the solution. Well, how can pH of the solution give me the X? Well, indirectly, the pH is telling me my concentration of my hydronium ion at equilibrium, okay, which in this case is my X value. So I was already given the X value through the pH of the solution. Now, this is not how equation uh, calculation is going to go for the rest of the problems. This is just when I'm trying to calculate Ka. When I'm talking about my future problems, I'm going to be given Ka, and I'm going to want to calculate the x, okay, which we talk about those problems later on. So in this problem, I was given the pH, therefore I know the x by calculating the concentration of hydronium through that pH. Okay, so X is equal to the hydronium ion concentration, which is equal to the anti-log of the negative pH, or mathematically we're talking about 10 to the negative pH. Make sure that you know how to use your calculator. On your calculator, on over the log button, there should be a 10 to the P, to the X button. You're trying to do that function. If you've got an expensive calculator, then you might have to look through a table to find it. Make sure you know how to use your calculator. So we know X is equal to the anti-log of a negative 3.39, which is the pH given to us, which is equal to 10 to the negative 3.39, which means X is equal to 4.1 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. Remember sig figs, the number of digits I have past the decimal, which in this case is two. That gives me how many sig figs I should have in my answer, which is two. This gives me the concentration of hydronium at equilibrium. This is my X quantity that I can plug into my equation and solve for my Ka. Okay, so you have your expression, hydronium ion, conjugate base, and acid concentrations at equilibrium. We said that those values are 
x for hydronium, x for the conjugate base, and 0.012 minus x for my acid. We know what x is, so we plug those values in, which would mean I get 0 0.00041 squared divided by 0 0.01159. When I subtract my 0 0.00041 from that 0 0.012, mathematically gives me 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now, the 1.4 times 10 to the negative fifth is a very small number. Okay, that's a small k. It's way less than 1. So that means that ionization for this acid is way less than 100%, way less than 5%. Okay, that's important to us because that's going to allow us to simplify the math of our future problems. Okay, that small k is going to allow us to simplify the math. Okay, which I told you before, I wanted you to pay attention to that 0.012 minus x. Let's look at that right now a little closer. 0.01 minus 2, 0.0112, 0 0.012 minus x would be 0 0.012 minus 0 0.00041, which gets you mathematically 0 0.01159. Sig, sig fig wise, we're at the thousands place for our number. So when I subtract my answer, I got to stay at the thousands place. Okay. So if I stay at the thousands place for my answer, sig fig wise, go about a decimal place, 0 0.01159 would round to 0 0.012. Notice that my final answer, sig fig wise, is the exact same number as my initial concentration. It didn't change. The concentration of your um, unionized acid remains virtually unchanged. This is important to remember because later on I'm going to do calculations and I'm going to take advantage of this. I'm going to say, well, x is much smaller than point. 0, 1, 2, which basically means I can neglect that x and just call it 0 0.012. That will simplify my math later. Something to keep in mind. We can do this because it's such a small k. I can't do that back in the KCKP chapter, so don't go back to chapter 32 and start eliminating x. You can't do that because the k is greater than 1. It doesn't work. It works here. And I'll show you when you can do it and how you can decide if you can do it later on in this lecture. Homework 28 deals with questions about Ka and acid ionizations.